Hello everybody, welcome to iOS programming course. Uh, we are going through multi-threading programming in iOS and uh, in last lecture we studied about NS thread. In today's lecture we will see how we can make our application multi-threaded by using NS operation queue and NS operations. Okay, uh, let's do it. First we need to create a property And the concept is uh, basically we need to create an NS operation queues which will hold NS operation objects and uh, basically NS operation objects are a candidate to be executed as a separate thread. So we will create NS operations and then we will add those operations to the operation queue and in operation queue they will reside as a uh, sorted by uh, their priority and when the priority will uh, come and uh, they will execute one by one then they can also execute concurrently and uh, we can set number of maximum concurrent threads or concurrent operation uh, should execute at one time here I declare an NS operation queue property and in view did load method I'm going to create Okay, uh, here I create an uh, operation queue. Yeah, I set the NS operation queue name to download queue, and basically it is a good practice to set the name, otherwise it's optional. Uh, if we will set its name, then we can see in debugging that which queue is executing right now. After that, I just set uh, that maximum concurrent operation should be ten. So. Uh, now, uh, what is NS operation? Basically, NS operation is a candidate object to be executed in a separate thread, as I told you earlier. And how we can uh, create that? Basically, the general practice is uh, we need to subclass NS operation and uh, and we need to override it. The code which we need to execute uh, in a separate thread should be in that main uh, should execute from the main uh, method. And we can also, uh, there is a start method, cancel and uh, like that, and we can execute, we can also override start method, but that's not a, a good practice. We should not uh, uh, override start method because if we are overriding start method, then we need to handle uh, operation state, executing is finished or is canceled by ourselves. There is another uh, operation, uh, it's and known as NS block operation, then we can add an execution block and, th and that will execute on the operation key. I will go with the uh, second uh, example. I need to tell you another important concept of uh, block programming. And the NS operation subclass task uh, is an exercise for you and you should do it yourself. And if you got any problem, I will do that also. Okay, let's do it. Okay, uh, now what I did, I actually create an operation and I said uh, I'm going to add an execution block and basically I copy paste all the uh, code from load image uh, from URL method and paste it here. Uh, I can just ca call that method from here also, but I need to tell you some important uh, concepts that how we need to update uh, UI from a background thread and how we need how how we should avoid some return cycles uh, in block uh, programming. So that's why I did that. If we run, okay. If we run, we can see something is happening there, but the thing is, it's taking too long. Okay, uh, it actually download. The thing, it, it was uh, not due to the network cycle, but the thing was uh, we were actually updating it from the background threads and that's why uh, it was not showing at the same time when it was updating. Basically, in here, we are updating our UI and as we know that right now it's a background thread, it's running in a background, this is never a good practice. So it's a best practice to update UI on a main thread. So uh, for that, I used to have a 
utility method and what it does basically I am giving it a block of a code and if we'll check if it's the main thread then it will execute otherwise it will get the main queue and execute that block so in here we should call run on main thread and provide a block of a code which should execute on the main thread so let's run now so look how instant it is previously we were not updating uh, UI on the main thread and that's why it was taking so long when we are using block then block basically capture its environment strongly so it will keep a strong reference and uh, you know if uh, in objective C if any object have a strong reference it will never deallocate it we are calling self inside a block which means that block will uh, hold self as a strong and also uh, self will have a, a pointer to the block so now both have a strong pointer to each other due to which they are never going to deallocate. So this is the uh, return cycle. We need to avoid this. How we can uh, avoid return cycle in Objective-C when we are using block programming? It's a very simple to avoid return cycle. Just call self uh, uh, from a weak pointer. To avoid a return cycle, what we did, we create a weak pointer. And inside block, we call uh, image view on a weak pointer, weak self pointer. and so it it means so it will not capture it strongly because it's a weak point if there is no other strong pointer then weak pointer will set to nil so in this case uh, this block will never uh, retain that object and and we have avoided the return cycle so this is how we do multi-threading with ns operation and ns operation and your task for this uh, lecture is to use ns operation by subclassing ns operation class bye till next lecture